So I've done a video on how to actually develop film, but what I didn't do is I didn't create a video on really all the chemicals and everything that you need. So what I use is the CineSteel CS41 kit. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just really um, an easy kit that I found that, that to make the whole process just really that much easier is really, I guess, what I'm trying to say. It gives you everything in the box, tells you exactly how to mix it, how much, everything that you're gonna need. You'll need some sort of container. I bought the Cine Stills, um, just thousand milliliter containers. Uh, they work really well, but you can use really any dark container that you want. Uh, some people prefer glass containers that are that dark brown color because it helps kind of keep the light out of it. Um, but yeah, anything will do on that. So we've got our instructions, we've got our chemicals. Let's take a look at what we have. It's a two, really a two part um, developing kit. You have your developer, then you have your Blix, and then you do have the last stage, which is that stabilizer. Um, which is in the box as well. So we'll go ahead and take everything out of the box. And uh, yeah, we don't need the box. So in here, you also get the uh, instructions on how to develop. It tells you how much time, what temperature the chemicals need to be at, and everything. So part A and part B, let's see what we got here. So the red one is our developer. We'll move everything else to the side for now. So you have part A, part B, and part C of your developer. Now on your instructions, it's gonna tell you exactly how much water you need and temperature you need to mix it all up at. So what I use is actually a tank like this. And I use this Cinestil uh, temperature gauge and it warms it and it also stirs the chemicals so it's just really convenient and it clips in there. So it just makes life easier. I would suggest picking one of those up on their website. So we'll go ahead and get started. What we got here? So we need first, we need 20 ounces of water, 591 milliliters. That's gonna make up about a thousand milliliters of liquid. I have all mine labeled as well, A, B, and C, because this is gonna be my developer process. It's gonna be my Blix, and then the final step. So that way, when I'm developing, I keep track of uh, what chemicals are where, so I don't screw up. So the water temperature needs to be at 120 degrees. That's the way this works, you turn this on. And then you set your temperature at the top. And it will start heating that up. So one thing with this is if you are using distilled water and it gives you an error message, what you need to do is add a splash of tap water into it because distilled water isn't ionized or some scientific term. Um, it may not be able to actually get a reading on the water because uh, it uses that electro something science terms. But you can just add a splash of just tap water. That fixes the error. So while it's stirring, you'll just go through and you will add in each bottle, bottle A, part A, B, and C of the developer into one. 
And then when that's done, we will then pour it into uh, our container. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stop the video. I'll fast forward to the end because this part, I mean, it's really not that exciting to watch somebody pour chemicals into a container as it stirs and heats up, unless you're into that. Let me know in the comments below if that's your thing and I will make videos pouring contents into containers and uh, letting this heat it up. I mean, who knows? There's a lot weirder videos out there. And we're back. So I've got part A, part B, and part C of the developer mixed in here and it's just warming it up and stirring the chemicals. And thank you for letting me know that you're done. So it's heated up the chemicals in the water mixture to 120 degrees. It's stirring it as we speak. So the developer part is mixed up. Now all we gotta do is pour it into a container. So what you'll need is a funnel. You'll need a container. Now the funnel, it doesn't really matter. You can go to Lowe's. Well, not right now because we're, most of us are under lockdown. But maybe you can order one to your house or something. It don't matter, a funnel, or you can just try and pour it into the container. So let's go ahead and do that without making a mess, preferably. Move my phone out of the way. That wasn't so hard now, was it? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to clean this so that way uh, I don't immediately contaminate the blicks uh, with some of the developer liquid on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll come right back. Okay, so the developer is mixed. We're good there. So we'll move on to the blicks. So this one needs What do we need? We need about 532 milliliters of water. So we'll go ahead and do that. That might be actually a little too much. Whoops. Oh well, we'll see what happens. All right. So again, temperature gauge in here. Let's be at 120 degrees. And then we've got part A, B, and C. And we will mix together. Now this one's really messy because it has this bleach fixer, so be really careful uh, about not getting this on your hands. I probably should be wearing gloves, but you can't find any rubber gloves anywhere right now. So this is really dangerous, but I'll be safe, don't worry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. All right, I got part A, part B uh, mixed in. I'm gonna mix in part C. The one thing I forgot is, this is almost not tall enough for all the chemicals. It's the one thing I don't like about this container. Or maybe I put too much water in. I probably put too much water in. So, while that finishes heating up, um, again, what we'll need, another container. Uh, I like to use different funnels, just because it, it's easier than having to clean each funnel every single time um, when you pour chemicals in or out especially during development, I try to work efficiently and I don't want to sit there and I have to like really clean a funnel. You can, it's not that big of a deal, but okay, that one's done. So we'll go ahead and pour those. Yeah, see this one's really messy. So you gotta be really careful about it. I recommend when you're doing this to have some sort of towel uh, on your table 
that you don't care that it gets ruined because this stuff will ruin it. So there we go, the Blix is done. So I don't need these anymore. Next is the stabilizer rinse, which is just this bottle. So same thing, we mix it in with 887 milliliters of water and we just stir that up. And uh, with this one, the water temperature can be somewhere between 72 to 101 degrees. So we'll go ahead and clean this up. We'll pour some more water in it, get it mixed up, put it in the bottle and we'll be done. Let that stir up and everything. Now, as far as storage, where you should store these, I talked with Cindy still, and they said that storing them in a refrigerator is a great idea because that will help slow down the chemical. Uh... Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. You're done, stop. Okay, cool. So storing them in the refrigerator is actually a really good idea. Kind of like storing film, it helps just kind of preserve it because over time chemicals will slowly break down. So make sure that if you do store it in your fridge that they are labeled so that your idiot roommates don't think it's some sort of a drink and decide to take a sip of it because that will probably kill them or make them very sick. And if they do anyways, then you probably shouldn't be hanging out with those kind of people. So that is really all there is to it. Again, you're gonna have another container I like to use different funnels for each chemical in each container. That way it keeps everything nice and clean. So as you can see, this one's kind of soapy. That's really what it is. It's kind of a last soapy bath for your negatives. All right, so there we go. I've got the chemicals all mixed up. So now I'm ready to start developing film it's a very easy process. I use a product called Lab Box to develop. So you can, it's a daylight developing kit, so I don't have to go into a dark room and try and figure out how to unspool and respool film because that seems completely um, ridiculous and complicated. Lab Box is great. You might check that out. Otherwise, those regular Patterson tanks, a lot of people have really good luck with that. And it's just probably practice unspooling in the dark and then re-spooling it to put it into the tank. But this just does it all in the daylight pretty much, um, the way you set it up. I've got a video on actually how to do that. I'll link that in the description below so you can watch that developing process using the lab box, using CS41 kit. But that is all I have for this video today. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down, that's okay too. And then in the comments below, just let me know if you have any questions, what you think, if I missed something, or maybe I didn't explain something that you really wanted to uh, hear. Let me know. And yeah, until next time, I uh, keep on creating, keep on taking photos, videos, whatever it is that you do, if this is just a hobby. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, watching this video. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.